let's get started then. So let's see what we have been doing so far. Uh, we started with one stage detectors, and then the first paper that we covered was overfeed. It was almost around the same time that uh, AlexNet came out for classification. So even from that time, people were thinking about object detection. And then after a while, we saw YOLO, you only look once. And the idea was that you want to divide your image into S by S grid, and each grid is going to be predicting a box and a confidence, and at the same time, a class probability map. And in the end, it's just a matter of multiplying these two to give us the boxes after non-maximum suppression. But then it was a matter of training it, and where there were some issues that we needed to take into account. One of them was properly weighting these loss functions. All of them are regression loss. There is no classification loss. And then also we had to be careful with the height and the width of our boxes, because these were with respect to the entire image, these height and width, that was YOLO. Then SSD came along and said, you can actually look at multiple feature maps. Then it's gonna give you more boxes to work with. You can also change your loss function and actually put a classification loss in the form of softmax. And then again, you had to properly weight these two loss functions. And these are the only changes compared to YOLO. And they got very good results, much better than faster are CNN and YOLO, both in terms of speed and then uh, accuracy, mean average precision. Then YOLO 9000 came along. This is going to be YOLO version 2. You're going to hear about version 2 also. And then they started competing with SSD. And they said if we include the ideas that are included in faster are CNN, and SSD. Actually, by the way, there was another idea in SSD, and that was anchor boxes, similar to faster RCN. If you include anchor boxes, you can improve the, the mean average precision. But then they said, uh, actually, if you choose your anchor boxes according to some clustering algorithm from your training data, and there is nothing wrong with doing that because you know your boxes from your training data, so you're not cheating. You can actually use that. And then that's going to give you much better uh, performance. And then you can get rid of the anchor boxes and use these priors. And then there were some other modifications like using batch norm, using pass through layer, which is going to combine two feature maps together. So it's just a matter of reshaping one of the feature maps from an earlier layer and then concatenating it with the next layer's feature map and use that for detection. So this is up until this point is going to give you YOLO version two again. And one other modification is that now your only your network is only responsible for predicting small modifications to some boxes that are coming out of your clustering. So these are small modifications compared to uh, a box, the coordinates of a box. This is YOLO version two. And then what makes it YOLO 9000? is that you can actually predict 9,000 classes by combining two data sets together. One of them is uh, for classification, and that's ImageNet data, and that has fine details for its labels. And the other one is Coco, which has big categories like cat, dog, car, airplane, etc. And then in ImageNet, you have Persian cat, tabby cat, bi biplane, jet, etc. So one idea is to combine these two data sets. The other one is to use hierarchical classification. Basically, you start with an object, then you go to the animal branch, and then animal being a cat, being a dog category, and then uh, you keep building up until you reach the leaf. For instance, you're gonna reach the probability of it being a Norfolk Terrier, condition on it being a terrier. And then this is going to give you the entire probability for that node in your tree. And then the rest of it is just a matter of training it. You jointly train your classification and detection algorithm on this data. Any questions so far? It was just a quick recap of what we covered for one stage detectors. And it's supposed to give us the big picture. Okay. So I'm going to introduce a new loss function in this paper, focal loss for dense object detection. And then we are going to see why you need a 
new loss function and why is it necessary? So there is gonna be a huge imbalance in your training data uh, when it comes to classification. Many of the boxes are very easy to classify. They either correspond to big objects in your image, which are easy to classify, or most of them are gonna be background. Therefore, you're gonna have a class imbalance when it comes to training. So this paper says the main problem with one stage detectors lagging behind two stage detectors is exactly because of this class imbalance. If we can fix that, we are gonna be able to get good accuracy out of, us, out of our classifier. So one idea to take care of class imbalance, and for now, let's assume you have two classes, plus one and minus one, is that you can have an alpha coefficient. It's gonna be alpha and one minus alpha in your loss. And alpha, for instance, could be the ratio of the ones uh, and the other one is the ratio of negative ones in your data set. This is how you're gonna define alpha and one minus alpha. But then apparently that's not enough. You can have your cross entropy loss and then you can have one alpha here to take care of the class imbalances. And then uh, you can, you have two options for choosing alpha. One is what I just said. You look at your training data and count the number of times in your training data you have easy examples and how many times you have hard examples and then set alpha according to that rule. Your other option is to use your validation data to set alpha properly. Basically train your algorithm multiple times on your training data and look at the performance of different alphas on your validation data and choose the best one. But apparently that's not enough. And there is actually one easier way of taking care of that. And that's just by multiplying your log probability on one minus P to the power gamma. What it does is let's take a look at gammas, different gammas. If gamma is zero, you're gonna get the cross entropy loss and that's this blue curve. And all of these examples that you're gonna see here, they're gonna correspond to easy examples. They're the ones that are having a high probability it means that you can actually classify them very easily. These are easy examples. And you want to downgrade them. If you play around with gamma, and if you make it larger and larger, then your curves are gonna go down and down. It goes to red, then to yellow, then to purple, and then to the green. And then you're putting a very small weight on the easy examples. So that's another tool that's gonna help you take care of easy examples, okay? By modifying your loss function. Any questions so far? But this was for two classes. You can have multiple classes. It's the same thing. You can have multiple alphas and you can have multiple gammas. Any questions? So in terms of network, what they're using, actually we covered this network. It's feature pyramid network. And it was a two-stage detector at that time. Uh, you can modify it to become one-stage detector. And if you remember, rather than having an image pyramid, basically images at multiple scales, you can use the features and try to make these features stronger by having an encoder and decoder structure. And then these features are gonna give you, these feature maps are gonna give you your multiple scales to work with. And then each feature map is gonna predict a class and a bounding box uh, for each anchor box. So you're gonna have A anchor boxes, and then uh, you're gonna have K classes, that's for the classification subnet, for the bounding box subnet, you're gonna have A anchor boxes and each one is gonna have four coordinates or adjustment to those anchor boxes. So that's your network, that's your loss function. And then in one round, you can train both your classifier and bounding box regressor using a multitask loss function. And in the end, the question is what alpha should I use and what gamma should I use? It's exactly what you're gonna do on your validation data. You look at average precision, and these are COCO style average precision. 50 is when you have your intersection over union to be 50% or 75% for average precision, 75. You look at those numbers, you keep varying alpha. These are your alphas, and then you're gonna choose the best one. I guess the best one is 0 0.9, or I think 31.1 is the biggest, but then there is some dis discrepancy here for average precision 50, this is the biggest one. So probably we're gonna choose 0.75, okay? You choose your alpha, 
that's your optimal alpha and then you keep varying your gamma yes so these are different alphas and then you keep varying your gamma and it turns out that this combination is giving you the best so that's what you're going to choose you set your gamma to be two you set your alpha to be 0 0.25 and you can actually have different versions of this retina network by changing the depth of your network being 50 or 101 these are resnet and then you can have multiple scales for your images and obviously if you have a higher depth and a higher scale that method is going to be very time consuming but it's going to be the most accurate so there is a trade-off between speed and accuracy how does it compare to the rest of the methods out there like faster rcn and plus plus we didn't cover it but i'm sure you have the background to read that paper on your own faster rcnn with feature from it network this one we covered and some other networks these are two stage methods and in terms of one stage methods you have yolo version 2 it's the previous paper we covered ssd we didn't cover dssd and this is retina net it's doing the best except for the large images which is competitive and as a whole, if you look at Coco style average precision on one axis and the other one to be your inference time, we want to push these curves to the right up, to the left up, sorry. So you want to push these curves up. You have two different versions of your network and then different depth and resolution. And you can see that this is doing the best in terms of Coco style average precision if you believe that that's a good metric compared to the rest of the landscape. Okay, this is a very good picture to tell us what's happening as of now in terms of inference speed and average precision. Any questions before I move to the next paper? Okay, the question is, did A not make it into the last chart? And which one is A? So, yeah, I noticed it didn't have a marker on that chart. It looks like that's because the time is 25 milliseconds. Okay, so it's off to the left. Okay. Yeah, super fast. So it's super fast. And it says it's not plotted. I see now. Thanks. But then we are going to go to the next paper for YOLO version 3.